just a dream, Uncle Victor. I keep having over and over each night. It, it seems so real. <laughs> well, well, Anne, I'd say that's one overactive imagination you have. It seems so real, Uncle Victor. I wake screaming. I, I don't know the man next to me, but I feel I've done great harm to a stranger. Some people in the old country believe in their dreams. They think they may give us insight into our true selves. I see you are holding that little charm that you wear around your neck. The, the man dead in the bed next to me has been shot in the chest. Oh, yes, it gives me comfort. You've uh, worn that old charm for as long as I can remember. Did you not receive it as a gift from my mother in the Ukraine but before you came to, uh, to live with your, your aunt and me? Yes. I did. She was so sweet and so serious. I remember her as a sweet, loving grandmama and a strange little gypsy woman. <laughs> <laughs> yes, mother, she was both a loving and a strange woman. Growing up in that household was uh, sometimes difficult. Remember, she used to have little charms everywhere. She used to say, each has a purpose, each has a place. <laughs> As children, we played around these and broke one, a small set of matryoshkas. <laughs> we thought she was going to kill us. <laughs> <laughs> I remember her saying that. Uh, she was very protective of her little hoard of trinkets. Uh, most held some superstitious value to her. To my brother and me, they were just things tempting for us to hold, but far out of reach, much like mother. We thought it was funny back then, seeing her small to even us children, getting all fumed up over a silly little wood carving. But now I think back on it, she was almost crying. She was so upset. She said something like, Anna, you really should be more careful. That contains something dangerous. What do you think she meant by that? I don't know. I, I really can't guess. Uh, she never shared all of her beliefs with me. <laughs> she muttered little incantations all the time. <laughs> we used to call her Baba Yaga or Mama Witch. <laughs> that was the day she put this around my neck and told me never to take it off. Her hands were shaking terribly. She had very unusual ways. Now that I look back on it, I'm sure she was crazy. She would start to read from her ancient books on stars and animals and things and not even know we were there. It felt at times as if she didn't see us at all. A little powder spilled on my hands from the matryoshka. She, she kept saying something about a box and Greek gods and goddesses, Pan or Pandora, something like that. She was a very special lady. A believer in all things superstitious. Was, uh, was that when you were living with her near the end of the war? Yes. My brother Nico and I had just lost Mama and Papa. She, she told me never to remove the necklace. To tell the truth, I, I forget I'm wearing it most of the time. I've never taken it off once, all these years until last week. Really? All these years? Why did you take it off? It fell off right as I was getting on the subway. And there was a man dressed all in black. He was quick and he grabbed the necklace as it fell. The strange thing is it felt like he was 
looking at it before it happened. Did this man give it back without protest? He did, but the, the look he made was almost one of revulsion. Later that day, I brought it to the jeweler. Which jeweler? The uncle, the one on 34th, the Emporium Fantastique. And you know your aunt and I have told you never to go to that place. I, I know, Uncle. I, I had the most peculiar urge to go inside. So I did. The owner, Demetrius, told me it would be five days, and it was. I, I picked it up today on the way over. Did this Demetrius say anything rude or odd to you? No, he was quiet and serious. Why do you not like him, uncle? 